Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salam alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you, thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show. And ladies and gentlemen, here on The Dean Show, he's making his appearance. Muhammad Sharif, here on The Dean Show, we'll be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be with you. Peace be with you too. Now, the million dollar question is what is going on? We've had everyone on the program. We had Sheikh Walid Basuni, we had Yasa Bijaz, Yasa this, that, everyone from, because you're the CEO of El Maghrib <laughs> and we've had our eye on you. Where you been? The audience wants you, to know, not just me. You know what's interesting, actually? You know, I'm going to shout out to my father-in-law. Every time we do a Maghrib Institute class, he doesn't show up. And all he does is watch the Dean Show. <laughs> so I said, alhamdulillah, you know what? I'm going to come on the Dean Show just so my father-in-law can benefit, inshallah. Thank you very much. No problem. It's May a this pleasure be, being here, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you. May this be a benefit to the whole world that's watching because you got some knowledge and you can't be stingy with it. So that's we're going to pick your brain so we can all learn. Inshallah. I can learn and then the whole world can learn who's watching. It'd be my pleasure. Thank inshallah. you. Muslim identity, Muslim is one who has chosen to consciously submit to the one God alone without any partners, equals, nothing like that. And just identity in general. People are looking for someone, something to identify with. And when you're not identifying with the right people, the right thing, you're identifying with the wrong thing. So let's talk about this, Sheikh. Sure. Sure. Okay, so um, human beings, I think uh, in order for human beings to like cultivate life on earth, they have this sheep, they call it sheep mentality and people kind of make it into a negative, but it actually, it brings unity amongst people. It's like you can find common people, you get together with them. Now, this hurting that happens with human beings, what we're talking about identity, if somebody doesn't consciously come along and guide them in the right direction, then, you know, the, the word I would say is like shaitan or the devil, the evil one basically becomes, you know, the herder of, of these people and their, and their thoughts and their minds. So leaders need to come along, guided people who pull people in the right direction. For a moment, tell us now, you said shaitan, the devil. Okay. Is this real? Is this something from Hollywood, Bollywood? There's really satanic forces that are working? Talk about this briefly before we move forward. Is there a satanic force? I think, you know, there's um, obviously when you have good, you just take it to the other spectrum, you have, you have bad, right? You have heat, take it away, you have cold. For those people who just want to understand that concept, that it might be like you, know, have, you have extreme good, and then you, that good starts getting pulled away, pulled away, until it becomes bad. So, I mean, that obviously we know in Islam uh, about shaitan, and it's in the history of all the scriptures. So. Our agenda here, she is to help people to understand the true purpose of life, why they're here, who their creator is, and we're inviting them to what's good. Okay. And now, before we can even get to that, a lot of times there's confusion out there because people are confused like, who am I? So again, they're mimicking, mocking the rappers, the hip-hop stars, the actors sure. and actresses. So how can we get them away from mocking people who will only lead them to destruction and considering mocking the best of people, which were the prophets? And the oh. last and final messenger is the best example. Please talk to us. Okay, sure. So if you look at, um, say, a school that has a dress code. Yes. And I remember once reading a cartoon, um, or, and in this cartoon, it was a bunch of kids from another school that didn't have a dress code, and they were saying, ha-ha, look at those uh, foolish kids. They're, they have, you know, 
a specific uniform. But the cartoon was making fun of the kids that were saying this because they all had their hats on backwards, they all had their jeans even backwards and their shirts and all of that stuff. In other words, that everybody is basically copying. Right? And that's human nature, that we're going to copy. Now, when you say um, who becomes our role model, basically the role model is defined by the television. Yeah. It's by the camera. So the people that get that stage are the actors and actresses. They're the musicians and so on and so forth. So you look at our children and, and our generation. It's like a whole nation of people are being raised up that this is their role model. Now, back in the olden days, if you take out television out of the picture, then who are the role models? Those are people who are um, actively involved in the community, people who are you know, doing good things in the community. That's the person that they see everywhere. Because you don't see actors and actresses everywhere. You see the, the leaders in the community. Hence, say when I was growing up, somebody who was a role model for me were like the older youth, the older boys in the community who were doing activities in the local masjid. And I was able to you know, absorb from that. But if I was to go to a Muslim kid today and say, who's your role model? you know, it's going to be Wolverine, it's going to be Spider-Man, yeah. it's going to be something like that. Yeah. yeah. Now, now, now tell us, why is it, do, do you feel, again, that when we mention, like, let's say Moses, okay. peace be upon him, Abraham, peace be upon him, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, peace be upon him, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and, and we see we, 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 we have so much utterance and respect for them, mm -hmm. but now it's not cool, like, to bring them up. This is weird, mm -hmm. but to talk about, you know, Brad Pitt, Keanu Reeves, J Lo, we can have a conversation. Sure. But if you talk about these great men and the legacy they left behind, I got time for that. Mm -hmm. Why do you think this is? Well, I guess that that's coming from um, from a culture that is trying to pull away from those things, right? So obviously. Um, here comes these religions, they come along and, and, and everybody's saying, you know, I'm the one following the truth. Somebody says, no, not them, follow me, follow me. So the, the names that are being thrown out are the names that you've mentioned. Yeah. People are just like throwing them out. But so the person who's listening to that, they just don't want to hear it anymore. And so their solution is to like shut down. So what I would say is that, no, that's not the solution. The solution is not to put your head in the sand and shut everything out. The solution is to will search out what is the truth. There's a lot of chatter out there. There's a lot of hiss and noise. Yeah. But somebody needs to basically say, well, what was the unifying message of these prophets? And really you know, go to a higher ground and look at that. And you will see that they're all unified, that there's no God but Allah. How, how can we get people to, to because obviously, if you're, you're, you're hungry, you're going to eat. OK. But now, if you're not hungry, your belly's full, no matter how great that gourmet dish is, dessert is, you, you're not really interested, right? Okay. So how can we get people to really to consider this, this proposition, proposal to take this matter seriously? Because the lights will go on, the party will end, sure. and you can only acquire so much wealth. How do we get them? Because sharing is caring. Right. We love our brothers in humanity, and we want them to be our brothers in faith. You know what's, what's interesting about your question is like this person, their stomach is full, even if it's a gourmet field. It, as soon as you said that, I'm thinking to myself that I actually, I disagree that their stomach is full. Talk to their me. stomach is empty. Empty. And if anything, it's their heart that's empty, right? So Allah puts something in the heart of everybody. It's like a GPS. Mm -hmm. So even the person who wants to deny God will not deny God, they'll say, I believe in a higher being. Because they can shut off their brain, they can shut off their heart. Allah is, you know, like, it's, He's beckoning them to, to come to Him. So this person is actually starving, but they're saying that they're full. So they go into drugs, they go into, you know, um, into fornication, they go into all these different areas, but they're still empty on the inside. So when we want to come along, and this is even for a Muslim who's trying to pass on the message, rather than coming to this person, you know, head on and say, hey, follow the prophets, I say we address the problem from an angle of, you know, what's the purpose of your life? Let's shut off this pain and let's test something out. So for example, somebody who, um, there is a, a rapper, like really intense rapper, and he became Muslim later, and he was doing alcohol and drugs and, you know, and the whole deal. And then there was a Muslim who invited him to pray. Yeah. And he said, once his head went on the ground, the sweetness of his forehead touching that carpet, and he's like, you know, I'm hooked. And that's what I'm talking about. They're starving, and they're actually trying to fill themselves, but it's not getting the job done. 
It's like eating cotton candy, right? It's like eating cotton candy. <laughs> Let's take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. And a matter of fact, you get testimonies from Christians in Eastern Europe thanking God for the rule of Muslims when the Ottoman Empire came and occupied because now they can have tolerance and religious freedom. I declare from today there is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone. The one God. The one God. Because the Muslims would not, you know, force you to convert to their religion. And the Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. That's the same in Aramaic, Jesus said Allah, so it's yeah. the same God. The same God. Back here on the Dean Show, talking about serious issues. You've mentioned the purpose of life. Many people, they know the purpose of their job. They know the purpose of many other things, but now the purpose of life, the crucial question, people aren't reflecting, aren't asking this question, why do you think this is? Okay, you know, um, obviously they're not asking the question. They might be asking the question, but they might be shutting it off as shutting well. Shutting it off. So it's like the purpose of life, I don't know, so let me just move on, right? But when it comes to the topic of the purpose of life, I think everybody, like, we're here for a reason. Yeah. And actually, you know what? Um, I was watching Iron Man recently, uh -huh. and Iron Man he gets out of um, he gets out of the caves, and he said, "If I'm still alive, then there must be a reason." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said that that's an interesting point. And even you know, it was it was emotional for me. I'm watching Iron Man. I'm emotional because if I'm still alive here, then there's a reason for me to be here, right? And anybody who's watching for you, for anybody, it's like, when did you think that you had no purpose? Right? And who convinced you of that? And who led you in that direction? So you have a purpose, and if you can accept that there, even a pen, as simple as a pen, if it has no purpose, once the ink dries up, you throw it away, it's worthless. Now, are you worthless? And you'd say, no, I'm not worthless, I'm a human being. So then the, the value comes from purpose. Right? So what is the purpose? What, why are you here on earth? And alhamdulillah, like questions like that where other people get confused. In Islam, we don't get confused. We actually know exactly what our purpose is. And then that's where the peace comes from, is knowing what our purpose is. Now, now for our not yet Muslim audience, you said two Arabic words. Sure. So they don't think we're saying some code <laughs> words here. You okay. said alhamdulillah and you said Islam. Okay. Please define those, please. Okay, so Islam is the religion of Islam. Um, literally, it, means, it comes from a root called salama, which means peace. And Islam is like a way of life, a way of like peaceful life. That's Islam, um, to worship Allah alone and uh, Allah meaning um, God alone, yeah. and to follow the message of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And the second word was Alhamdulillah, which is uh, thankfulness, right? So Alhamdulillah literally means um, thank you, God. Yeah. I was actually reading a bumper sticker. It's an it's a habit that Muslims do in the afternoon and the mornings to thank God. Very specifically, and I was reading a bunk, bumper sticker. As I was doing this um, Muslim habit of thanking God, saying Alhamdulillah, the bumper sticker said, have you thanked God today? And I'm like, I'm doing it right now. We're doing it all the <laughs> right, time. That's alhamdulillah, right. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Is alhamdulillah. Our life. Okay, we, we mentioned purpose of light. Now, where does someone who's confused, they see all these religions, okay. and they say, you know what, it's all the same. I'm just going to do my own thing. How do we get them to think outside the box, and how do we get them to think serious? And how do they differentiate what's the true way of life, the way of life God wants that person to live from all the different man-made religions? Okay, sure. So people are confused with the different religions. And, and we've all gone through this stage. Even when I was younger, I said, you know what? It's not about Islam. It's not about this. I'm going to find the religion of truth. And I actually came to the conclusion that I found it. Yeah. Right? So this, is what, this would be my recommendation in the muddle and in the, in the quicksand and mud of everybody disagreeing and yapping and so on, I recommend the person to step above that, okay? Mm -hmm. Now you've got higher principles that unify multiple people. Now usually people who have reached the higher principle stage, they kind of like reject religion at that point. They're mm -hmm. like, I'm just gonna take the higher principles. But I'm saying take the higher principles and you'll find that those higher principles are found in Islam. Right? So for example, if people are saying, oh, worship this idol, worship you know, this, worship that, and you'd say, well, I just want to worship God, boom, you came to a higher level. Instead of rejecting the religions, that's what the message of Islam is, worship one God alone. One God. One God, that's it. And, not, and that's the basis of everything in Islam. The other thing is realize that um, God created you 
So inside of you, I was saying earlier about a GPS, your body can sense when some, you know, there's some, you know, funny stuff going on. And the body doesn't, you know, it doesn't accept that. So when you actually go to the Islamic laws, your body is naturally inclined to that. Mm -hmm. So very often you'll hear Islam and then you're like, that makes sense. Yeah. You hear something else about Islam, that makes sense, that makes sense. And you're like, the whole religion's like that. Is, is there anything, just to assuage any fears, in Islam, do you have like rolling around with rats? You know, beating yourself over the head with right. a knife or a whip and, you know, because people, you know, they might think these things. That's right. As weird it is to us, but what, what do we got to say about that? Is there anything like that in Islam? I mean, obviously, the, the, the actually the cool thing about Islam is that there's a uh, set criteria of how to check whether something like that is authentic or not. A falsification it's, test? Uh, a falsification test. In Islam. And a lot of times, you know, when you have with other religions, you know, some person of authority tells you something and you just kind of like, okay, I got to accept it because he's a person of authority. In Islam, you don't really have that authority figure. You've got authority tests. Okay. So if somebody says something to me, he's like, Muhammad, I had a dream last night that, you know, this is the way to go to paradise. I'd be like, whatever, <laughs> right? I'm like, let's put it through the filters. Yeah. And I actually studied that in detail. Automatically, as soon as somebody starts talking, I'm like, boom, 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 here are the filters. Where did you get this from? So if you're going to make something up, like you made it up, then you're going to need to have proof, mm -hmm. right? And if you're going to, um, if you're going to quote somebody else, you're going to say, so-and-so said this, right, then you're going to need to bring up the citation. Where did that come from? Yeah. So with those two rules, what's your proof or where's your citation? Then you've got like, that's one of the basic filters right there. So in Islam, we have the truth and it's backed up with proof? Of course. Yeah. And we're not doing, it's not blind faith? For sure. There's, there's no such thing as blind faith in Islam. So how, before we submit ourselves, did we... Actually, you know, even on the point of the blind faith, yeah. I would say that even the scholars of the past, they would say that it's not even permissible for somebody to accept my opinion unless they know the proof, right? So the whole concept of the blind faith, they're even protecting the future followers, saying that, like, you have to know the proof. So here's the proof. And a lot, sometimes people, they just drop the proof. They're like, well, just take whatever you say. But they're saying, like, no, you have to know the proof because the authority is coming from the proof. It's not coming from the person. So it's not where you start digging in Islam. Things start getting confused. And they're just, it's a mystery, man. Just, just believe. No, is that, that's yeah, not how it is in absolutely Islam? Absolutely not. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Seriousness of taking this topic serious, deaf. Can we just, that is what helped me get my act together. Okay. Was reflecting about deaf. Is this a serious matter? You know, ultimately, you know, on the topic of death, I know a lot of people try to avoid it and so on. You want to live your life um, prepared to die. Yeah. Right? So in other words, you know, recently in my city there was an earthquake. When an earthquake strikes, that's not the time to start thinking about death. You know, like every day you wake up in the morning, you want to say to yourself, am I prepared to die today? Am I prepared, prepared to, to die, die today? today? And that's got to be like in your mind, all, that's like your life mission is preparing to die. So that when the time of death does come along, it's like you've been preparing for this your whole life. All right? And that's what life is all about. It's not about, oh, let's live in the moment. It's like, let's live in the moment with our hearts in the hereafter so that we make the right decisions in the moment. Now, living life according to God's will, not your desires, paradise, is that guaranteed for an individual then? If you do all the good, that God wants you to do, and you die in a good, righteous state, worshiping only the one God, following His last and final messenger, which obviously precedes all the other messengers, okay. the glad tidings. Is this what we're seeking, paradise? It is, it is, but I would also add something to what you said, Please. is that human beings, they make mistakes, Yes. right? So we're not saying what other people, have, other religions have said, that you know what, as long as you accept this and that, yeah. you're going to go to paradise. Mm -hmm. We know as human beings, Islam is a natural way and a person will make mistakes. Yeah. So it's not a, um, just a, a utopia or ideal or perfect person. Yeah. So in Islam, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said that every son of Adam, every human being makes mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right. So when I make a mistake, as I've made you know, today, like hundreds of mistakes, just in this day, I'm thinking to myself, I'm a human being, I'm not an angel. And that's what Islam teaches me. I actually tell you this um, this story. I was at a um, a Tony Robbins convention, yes. right? And I was sitting beside a Jewish man, 
And um, and I was listening to what Tony Robbins was saying. I was getting excited. That's you know. the big tall guy. Yeah, the big it? tall guy. Yeah. He's kind of tall like you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and then I was so happy. I'm like, I can I can implement what this guy's saying. And my Jewish friend was saying to me that you know what he was feeling sad. I said, Why are you sad? He said, Because what Tony's saying is. Um, He's like, I know that one week from now, I'm not going to be able to keep up with that. And I said, you know what, that's the beauty of Islam because I'm not worried about keeping up with it. Because I know that as a human being, I'm going to dip. And when the dip happens, I just turn it back around. Mm -hmm. Right? So in Islam, when a person makes a mistake, they ask Allah for forgiveness. And Allah, one of the, uh, God's, one of His names is the oft forgiving. And He loves to hear our forgiveness. So I'm like, I'm a human being, I made a mistake today. Oh Allah, please forgive me for this. And I know that by me asking forgiveness, I'm actually coming closer to God. God Almighty is the most loving, the most merciful, the forgiving. We'll leave on that note for a second, and we'll be right back for more on The Dean Show. He is born about 60 years ago in former Yugoslavia. Today is Bosnia. After Second World War, can you imagine today you have one child killed too much? It's important that we realize that Islam is a gift. So we believe that in the teachings of Jesus, what is left, there is truth in there. But the truth has been mixed up with paganism and with nature worship. And so Islam has given you a pure, straightforward way of approaching monotheism. Back here with my brother, your brother, Sheikh Mohammed Al-Sharif. Al-Sharif. And we're really... I'm thankful that you are here with us. Thank you very much. It's, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you. And inshallah, we can have you back again sometime. Inshallah. Now we're talking about, we started off talking about identity. Okay. So we define somewhat, just gave people somewhat of a taste of what Islam is about. Okay. So if you, if you push towards identifying more with Islam, the creator's way of life that he's given to us to live by, okay. what are more of the positive outcomes that you'll have as opposed to identifying, again, with the TV stars, with the rap stars, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, perfect. Okay, so Allah, our God, has, um, He created human beings. He knows, like, the master plan of where we're all going and what brings, um, what will bring us prosperity and what will not. So, for example, something like alcohol. As a Muslim, I don't drink alcohol. So the people that are caught up and they're addicted and, and it's causing all the harms, I'm already protected from that because Allah protected. When it comes to, um, you know, the mortgage crisis in, yeah. in the U.S., as a Muslim, I'm not involved in um, taking or receiving interest. So because of that, I don't have a house. I didn't get involved. So when the market collapses, I'm already saved from it because yeah. I was never there in the first place, yes. right? And so the only one who's saving me from all of this is Allah Almighty, and it's because I've taken those promises, uh, God's message, and implemented in my life, and I've been saved from these harms. Maybe in the short term, if somebody was to say, hey, just have a glass of wine, it seems like, oh, I'm missing out, or so on and so forth. But look at the long-term long effects of those things, and you realize that Islam has protected the believers. And sometimes I'm like with my wife, and I'll say, you know what, we really need to be thankful for this religion of Islam because of how many vices we've been protected from because of Islam. Big time, big time, and we thank the creator of the heavens and earth for guiding us to the truth and protecting us. And tell us now for the Muslim okay. that is a little nervous about his identity. Sure. So you'll say, and you'll be happy to see the person and you want to give him the salam. You say, salam alaikum. He's like, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Or you say, you know, uh, Muhammad, is that you? <laughs> no, it's, it's actually Mo. Sure. Uh, what advice do you have for them? Okay, so uh, when a person, th th I have this, um, this criteria. I tell a person that, you know, if you're going to a park to pray and you feel nervous, whose permission do you need? If they gave you permission, you would feel comfortable praying. So I'm like, what is it? Is it the government that you want to give you permission to pray? Is it, you know, like uh, a non-Muslim walking by, you want them to give you permission to pray? Who, if they gave you permission, you would be fine. And then when they, if you identify who that person is, because even in the example that you gave, they've got a co-worker that they've actually made like their slave master. Right. And they become a slave to them. Wow. And it's like, ah, well, I can't tell you what my real name is because slave master so-and-so. And, and that person doesn't even know they were made the slave. It's like arbitrary. They've put people in their lives 
above you know, themselves. And I would say, so when I'm going to pray and I start to feel nervous, I say to myself, I don't need anybody's permission to pray. And nobody is my slave master. I'm a free man, right? Land of the free, home yes. of the brave. And that's what it is. Muslims need to be, um, you don't need anybody's permission to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now we want to talk to our sisters who we love so much. And they also have an identity, the, the Muslim identity. But some of the Muslim sisters, they're a little more scared of what the environment, the people might say, so they leer away from wearing the proper identity to hijab. What advice do you have for them? Okay, it's, it's the same concept as well. It's, um, we were saying earlier about kind of like the sheep mentality. We want to identify with a group of people. When you're living in an area, in a community that's not worshiping Allah, you actually have to go against the, um, that sheep reaction. And you've got to say, you know what, I'm a leader, I'm not a sheep here. So what the sister, you know, that's the, you know, the pull of the sheep, the pull of the crowd, or is she going to pull away and identify herself? So she really does have a big test, but here is the beautiful thing for our Muslim sisters is that because at an early age they're like um, dressing differently, they have to become stronger at such an early age. Yeah. So their identity, in fact, if you take a Muslim man and a Muslim woman, a Muslim woman who's like wearing hijab, she's usually much stronger than the man. Yeah. Because her identity has been, you know, brought up all these years. And that, interestingly, is that protection. They always speak about hijab as a protection. A lot of people don't realize that your identity is being protected. And your character and your strength is being protected because you're not becoming a sheep when you wear that. Closing comments and suggestions for those who are having an identity crisis. If you have an identity crisis, I say invoke the sheep. Okay, and by that I mean that you will have a sheep, uh, a sheep reaction, so get with good companionship. Go to your local masjid, find some good people, and, and say basically like, I want, I want you to be my shepherd, right? And I want to be in, in this companionship. So if you, with a group of three, four people that don't swear, and you say a swear word, they're kind of shy away from that, you'll feel bad, and you'll start changing your vocabulary with a group like that, and that would be my suggestion get in some good companionship. In the last 30 seconds, talk to us, talk to them about your institute that you're the CEO of El Maghrib and how people can get involved taking some classes to get more knowledge about Islam. Okay, sure. So El Maghrib Institute, we do um, two weekend seminars. Right now it's one of the biggest projects, Islamic projects in North America and in the UK. You can get more information at almaghrib.org. That's A-L-M-A ghrib.org and um, we do cities in about uh, we do classes in about 30 cities across uh, the western world so there should be a city a class happening near to you we started with peace we end with peace salam alaikum wa alaikum assalam may god almighty allah reward you thank you thank you very, very much. much and that was my brother and your brother sheikh muhammad el sharif here on the dean show giving us some great advice establish your identity and the creator of the heavens and earth has told you what your identity needs to be. You need to be a Muslim, one who has chosen consciously, not by coercion, but has made a rational decision that I want to do God's will. I want to do all the good that the creator of the heavens and the earth has told me to do. And then the reward is paradise, Jannah. So do this good, beseech him, ask him, pray to him, repent to him, alone without any partners, co-equals. No one, nothing is like God and pray to that one God when the going gets tough, or whenever you're in distress, He is the only one that can answer that call, your prayers. And we'll see you next time. Continue to tune in every week to The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. He created the universe. To Him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever-living, He is the first. He's the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worshiping other than Allah. There is none greater than the Creator.
pray as if everything depends on Allah, and it does. But you must work as if everything depends on you, and it doesn't. That's my point. You see what I'm saying? Man? And I don't like that. I don't like us sitting here. What are you waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? What are we waiting for all these people to come to Islam? What are we waiting for? What are we waiting for right now? When are they going to come? They're going to come to Allah, going to bring these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in our hand the ability to do it. Now do your job. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone.